Good morning. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. Um, tell you what, let's turn to John 16 and Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, John 16, then Revelation 17, then 2 Corinthians 11, and then, come on, you know we're not just going to sit one place in the Bible. Proverbs 8, John, we're going to start in John 16, and um, you go there, and I'll start in um, <clears throat> the, the source text that we're looking at this morning. Uh, is Second Corinthians 11 um, had some uh, good, good presentations, good uh, messages God gave me Friday night, Saturday morning, and um, and it was God just kind of directed me. That's sort of what Brother Lonnie wanted was to just to reaffirm our conviction about the Bible. Uh, we believe what the Bible says, and we just. We don't believe anything not in the Bible. And, um, and that makes us peculiar. That makes us weird. And uh, according to the world's standards. And, but I don't care. Okay? The world didn't give me anything that I needed anyway. And so anyway. But Second Corinthians, God just blessed that. We, I, I recorded them. And um, I'm going to make sure the, the files came out okay, and we'll get those out uh, on, uh, on the Internet. We'll have them on DVD as soon as we can get to them, uh, hopefully this week. Um, Paul said, Though I, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So, we have touched on this issue of another Jesus. We're going to look at another spirit. And remember, these are all connected, one with another. If somebody brings another Jesus, it is going to be by way of another spirit and another gospel. There's one, you, if you get one, you're going to get the others. Okay, very important to keep in mind. And uh, let's identify the real Holy Spirit. John chapter 16. And there's a word here that I have underlined that uh, in, especially nowadays is very, very important. Uh, and if you don't believe the Bible, you won't, you won't, you won't get it. You, you will be told false doctrine. And there is... If, if he warned us about another spirit, is there in fact another spirit? Yes, he warned us about it. And so, um, in John chapter 16, um, oh, let's see here, where, where can I start here? The text on the screen starts at verse 7. Uh, let's go to verse 6. But because I've said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you <clears throat> that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, notice that capital C in your Bible, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. There's a couple things out of this that I want you to understand. Uh, number one, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, is it not? Okay? And... And the, the way that King James translated this, they got it right. This is our comfort. That he is our helper. He is the one. And I want you to think about this. They didn't want Jesus to go away, but he said, I have to. He said, and it's sort of like, you know, while I'm here, I'm with you, but I'm only with you. If I go away, then God will send the comforter. And he'll pour it out upon all flesh, not just, you know, a few believing Jews here in Jerusalem. It'll go, he'll go to everybody. And so he said, it's expedient that I go away. And so we're going to send the comforter. The word comforter 
is a Bible word. It's a Holy Ghost word. It's a Bible word. We find comfort in scriptures. The word comfort is in your Bible 66 times. 66 books in your Bible. I think that's on purpose. Amen. But he said, the comforter will not come unto you. Uh, and I have underlined here, verse 8, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now, in, um, in verse 7, the very last part of verse 7, he said, I will send him unto you. In verse 8, he says, when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. The Holy Spirit of God is a masculine spirit. Keep that in mind. Very, very important. Because we are, we are inundated now with social media. And everybody who has, or let me say it like this. Every devil that has ever wanted to succeed in lying to a mass group of people has found YouTube. And social media and Facebook and everything else. Because every, literally every false doctrine has a YouTube channel and has at least a thousand people making YouTube videos on these false doctrines. All right? And, um, and I've seen them, I, I won't say I've seen them all, but I've seen enough to know what's out there. There is a, a movement afoot, and it comes in various different styles, different, um, from many different cult ideas all at once, that the Holy Spirit is a female spirit. The Holy Spirit is a female spirit. One guy uh, had it like this, and this is the way that I guess the Jews believe, that there is... Yahweh God, this is how they turned him, Yahweh. And he has his Shekinah female Holy Spirit. And Yahweh and Shekinah got together and had a baby named uh, Yeshua, Jesus. That's, that's wicked. That's very, very vile and wicked. But you'd, you'd be amazed at the number of people that believe it, the number of YouTube hits, the number of people that watch these videos. And it's a pervasive concept. There was a woman that had her own YouTube channel. She was some great Bible teacher on YouTube. I don't know. But uh, she had come to the... She was teaching everybody that the Holy Spirit was a female. And, uh, and it's sort of along this same idea that God... The masculine deity made it with or got together through the Holy Spirit, created Jesus. All right? And I'm just telling you, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Your Bible, your plain English King James Bible, leaves it in no uncertain terms that the Holy Spirit is masculine. He, it says he, um, it says him. He, when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. In uh, verse 13, there it is again. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. How many times does he have to say he here for you to get it? Okay? And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. And shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath for mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So I mean repeatedly, over and over and over, Jesus himself is referring to the Holy Spirit in the masculine, in the masculine way. This spirit, and, and then there's some people who say, well, God is a spirit, so that means he is above being masculine or feminine. That is not... What verse is that coming from? What passage of scripture are you getting that from? Um, more and more, we are being inundated with this idea that God is either non-gender or that he is a combination of both male and female genders.
genders. That's what's being told. To me, the purpose of the gender-neutral Bible has very little to do with the feminists who are angry because they're not properly represented by God somehow. That, that if you teach a masculine God, that means you hate women and you're going to batter your wife and all this stuff that they come up with. To me, it has very little to do with that. It, to me, it has everything to do with trying to gender neutralize God, take away his masculinity, so it can be replaced with a God that is both, that is omnigendered. He is as much masculine as he is feminine. And you will hear people talk about, you will hear uh, false, uh, Kenneth Copeland is one of them. Kenneth Copeland believes that God, and he said it, that God is as much masculine as he is feminine. Rick Warren is another one that he believed that God is as much masculine as he is feminine. And uh, if you look at, um, turn to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now, the, other, the newer translations do not, do not have verse 27 rendered this way. And I don't remember exactly how they are, but the newer translations leave, leave a little bit of room to believe that God, and, and Copeland teaches this, I know, and I think probably Rick Warren did too, that when God created Adam, he created him both male and female because God is both male and female. And, and the way they retranslate Genesis 1.27, they write it out so that it sounds like Adam is both male and female. But that if you look at how that verse is written out, it does not say that. It says, God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, and then, male and female created he, them. Male and female, them. That means two different individuals. So then they say that here's Adam, and he's in the image of God, both male and female, because God is both male and female. And when God got ready to create woman, all he did was remove from Adam his feminine side, and then made the woman and brought him back to the man. But the Bible doesn't say that. It, the King James Bible doesn't say that. That's why I believe this book is right. Amen? There is a God that I believe is both masculine and feminine. His name is Antichrist. Okay? I think the Antichrist is a omnigendered or the term uh, androgynous andro meaning man gynous meaning female androgynous and all throughout history in mythology you have an androgynous deity that people worship uh, Bacchus or Dionysus the god of wine and fest festivities and drunken parties was a a masculine and feminine deity um, Leonardo da Vinci drew a sketch that was the basis for his image of John the Baptist. He drew a sketch called Angel in the Flesh, or Flesh Angel, and it was a feminine and masculine person. And it was raunchy. Uh, da Vinci was, this guy was wacky, okay? He's weird. So anyway, there is, there, is this, there is this movement, this idea of expressing the God of this Bible as a masculine and a feminine deity. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for the idea that the Holy Spirit is a female. You have the very clear language in John chapter 16, all right? Now, I wanted you to look in, um, in uh, Proverbs chapter 8. 
Proverbs chapter 8. In Proverbs chapter 8, you have a um, you have Solomon writing out about a concept called wisdom. And he says in verse 1, Does not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places, by the way of the places, uh, of, of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Uh, if you look at, um, oh, let's see here. Let's see, on down, on down, I'm trying to find out. But any, anyway, in, uh, in Proverbs 8, and there's other places in the book of Proverbs where it gives wisdom a, a feminine gender, all right? Think of it like this. I believe, and I think the Bible bears this out, both in, in doctrine and typology, that the human soul is a female. Um, my soul make, doth make her boast, is what the, the psalmist said. Clearly in typology, the church is always a female. She is the bride, um, and, and so on. Picture wisdom being an emblem of a church or the church of Jesus Christ wherein the Holy Spirit dwells in us God's Word fills us and we cry out to the world our wisdom that God has given us doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice she standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man, and, and so on. There are two types of religion in the world. There are mystery religions, and there is Bible Christianity. The church is to never, ever, ever have secret doctrines. Never have secret teaching. Never have secret services, secret rituals. Never have uh, uh, any kind of secret symbols, secret handshakes, secret words, anything. There is nothing, nothing that we proclaim, that we believe. Nothing in our Bibles should be kept secret from mankind. Jesus told his disciples, use this many, I, you know, when I read this, it just, boy, there it is right there. Jesus told his disciples, what I speak into your ear, you proclaim from the rooftops. You, I want you to tell everybody what what I said the words that I give you we're not going to withhold them from mankind there is a part of the Apocrypha where Jeremiah was um, uh, called in his scribes and he has his scribes write out a uh, two sets of books one set of books was to be read to all the people out in the streets another set of books was to never be read to those people. It was to be read only to uh, the elite inside the city. In other words, they were going to be. There was a set of books that came from God that was going to be withheld from mankind. That's not right. That's not right. There is a uh, a show on Christian TV networks called It's Supernatural, and um, Sid Roth has has in some of the wackiest, goofiest people I've ever seen in my life. But one of these guys said that uh, he, went, he, he went to heaven, he had a vision, he went to heaven, he saw Jesus, and Jesus showed him this massive library of books. And it was all of these other teachings that Jesus had that filled these books up in heaven. And Jesus... Uh, told this man that he could take any two books and bring them back with him down to earth. And so he reaches over for one of them, and he's about to pull it off the shelf, and Jesus said, no, accept that one. And he said, the world is not ready for that one yet. And he said, but I'll tell you what, when the world is ready, I'll call you, 
and I will have you come and get this other book and bring it down to the world so that they can have it. The book was titled John 22. There are only one, 21 chapters in the book of John. This was supposedly a 22nd chapter of the book of John that was written in heaven that this guy wanted to bring to the earth and Jesus said, oh no, they're not ready for this one yet. But at a certain time, I'll have you come back up and get it and you can bring it down here. That is another gospel. It's what it is. It's very plain to me. But this whole idea that God has all this, and he's not the only one that's put this idea forth. Perry Stone, who's another one of these big Christian TV broadcasters, his dad, he had a conversation with his dad. And his dad um, said that a man that they knew that had died uh, came back and talked to Perry Stone's dad and showed him this library in heaven full of books, full of these teachings that Jesus had up in heaven that apparently are not for us down here. That just stinks of mystery, secret society, corruption. I don't go it. I don't I don't buy it. I don't think God has that that same idea is what Satan said to Eve. For God doth know that in the day ye there have been your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Satan was trying to put forth the idea that God had a secret knowledge that he was withholding from man. It's like Prometheus, who wants to bring fire. Fire is something only the gods can have. Prometheus wants to bring fire down and give it to mortal men, and the gods don't want him to. It's that, it's that same, same idea. That God has a secret knowledge, there are secret books up in heaven, and there are people who want to bring them down and give them to mankind, but God is, is evil and won't let them. Lucifer then is the good guy, because Lucifer wants to bring the secret knowledge of God down to mankind. You already have everything for life, light, everything that is, is right here in 66 books of your Bible. 1189 chapters of your Bible. Everything is right here. And God gives it freely to mankind. He gives it to the church. And the church then can stand out at the gates and cry out to everybody going by, we have something to share with you. We have something to give you. We have something from heaven that we are not going to withhold. We're, to, we're going to tell everybody what it is we know. Jesus himself said that the end shall not come until the gospel is preached into the entire world, and then shall the end come. So clearly, God is not the one holding secret doctrines, secret teachings. The devil is. The identity and the person of the Antichrist is being hidden by the mystery religions. They're not going to call him by name. They're not going to say who he is. They're not going to reveal him. They're trying to keep it secret. And so there, that gets into the spirit that goes into churches, denominations, cults, different people. The spirit that is uh, conveyed in a lot of these internet teachings is not the Holy Spirit of God. Because number one, it attempts to make the Holy Spirit a female spirit. And the Holy Spirit is clearly, according to John 16 and other places, clearly the Holy Spirit is not a female. He is masculine, just like God the Father is, just like Jesus the Son is, just like all the writers of the Bible not one of them was a woman. Forty men that God gave his holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost of God, all of which was a masculine. Now, uh, what feminine spirit do we find? Go to Revelation 17. Revelation 17. This, this would be your biggest clue here as to what spirit 
is in a particular church, what spirit is in a Bible, what spirit is, um, what spirit is in a teaching that you can hear. Um, I've got book after book after book from different mystery sources and so on. And a lot of them proclaim a female spirit. A female spirit. Um, witchcraft. When I say witch, you think of male or female? Female. Wicca is primarily a feminine religion. It reaches out to... Um, there's a... There's a a, uh, a witch that writes books on witchcraft. Her name is Silver Ravencroft. And she writes, she wrote a book called Teen Witch. And it's a very popular book. You can go to any of these big name bookstores and find it. But it's primarily written to teenage girls. Trying to lure them in by promising them power, promising them control over every situation. And you're going after very vulnerable girls who are at a transition age in their life and teaching them that they can have control over every situation in their life if they will just learn to practice witchcraft. And it is, I think, one of the fastest and biggest growing religions in America is just flat out witchcraft. You'd be amazed at the number of subdivision women who practice witchcraft. We had, uh, when we had a Christian school here, we had a lady that brought her, she had four daughters that she brought to this school. And I talked to her at length, you know, why are you bringing them here and so on. And she assured me that she was a Christian. I said, okay, well, um, the girls were here for about a month and we started noticing some things happening around here. And the kids, some of the kids were going to church here. They knew me. They knew my stand. And they were coming telling me, saying, uh, Mr. Hogger, these girls are telling us that their mom practices witchcraft. And one of the girls was, had made friends with some of the other girls here and was in the girls' bathroom turning the lights out saying, I'm going to summon a spirit in here. And uh, they started, to, the more they quizzed these, these girls from this, from this one family, the more it became clear to me that their mom practiced witchcraft. And I called the mom and I said, come get them. They ain't coming to school here no more. I put them out. I'm not going to mess around with that stuff. I don't want that. That's a bad, 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 evil, very bad spirit. comes in a lot of different flavors, but it's a very, very evil spirit. Here's the spirit that it is. In Revelation 17, there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The great whore, that's her nature. In fact, that's the opposite. Think about it. Holy Spirit is a masculine spirit, and it's holy. This female is the spirit of whoredom, an unclean spirit. She is the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Since she is an unclean woman, the, there's a law that says that when a woman is in her uncleanness, that she is unclean for a certain amount of days, and it also says that everything that she sits on is unclean. She is, whatever she sits on in, her, in the time of her uncleanness, she has defiled that. And that's what you see here. That's what I think is, is, is being mentioned here. The great whore that sitteth upon many waters. She has defiled these waters because she sits on them in her uncleanness. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, do you remember Nancy Reagan? What was Nancy Reagan getting into? Astrology. That's whoredoms. That's witchcraft. That's the false. That's one of the things that God expressly forbid was an observer of times, which is what astrology is. 
the observation of times, uh, and you know, here we are talking about this right before Halloween. The observation of times, observing of times, um, and necromancy, and charming, and witchcraft, and, and, and incantations, which is an enchanter, and all these things expressly, word for word, forbidden in the scriptures. Uh, committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she is, a, she is an unclean spirit. She is the opposite of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will cause you to be sober. Be sober-minded. Uh, the elder women in the church are to teach the younger women to be grave and to be sober. Amen? That means, Sister Pam, Sister Nancy, you can't be drinking out a martini glass in one hand and teaching the kids in the church in the other. Amen? Can't be drunkards. Can't be uh, wine bibbers and things like that. Uh, but anyway... Uh, the drunken spirit is the opposite of the Holy Spirit that makes you sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary the devil walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Kenneth Copeland, Rodney Howard Brown, Joyce Myers, and many, many, many others are expressing a, a spirit of God that causes drunkenness. There is a uh, video that uh, came out several years ago, uh, Joseph Chambers of Paul Creek Ministries. He's actually what he, he refers to himself as a classic Pentecostal. And I've talked to the man on, on um, I talked to him on the phone years ago, and I like the guy. But he was exposing this false spirit that was going around. And he had a video clip, and when I looked at it, I'm going, I know where this was. It was filmed at what used to be Life Christian Center up here on Highway 30, back when Rick Shelton was the pastor there. And Rick Shelton had Kenneth Copeland. He had, of course, he had, that's where Joyce Meyer comes from. And he had um, um, uh, Kenneth Hagan. And Kenneth Hagan was going around talking about how to give everybody a drunken spirit and how everybody, all these apostles and these guys on the day of Pentecost, they were all drunk. And they were all acting like drunks and they were reeling around and he goes around touching people on the head and people are falling down and they're laughing uncontrollably and they're acting like drunkards. And then it ends up with a, in a scene that to describe it, I would have to use words that I'm not comfortable with using in Sunday school. But you have men and women literally piled on top of one another in a church service because they're under the spirit. They're drunk in the spirit. They're laying all over the top of each other, either acting like they're passed out or in some cases passed out. Um, and just for a brief moment, you get a, a glimpse of a celebrity that's in that crowd. And it was Donna Douglas. You know who that is? Ellie Mae, Ellie Mae from uh, Beverly Hill Village. After she left Hollywood, she became a Christian. And we, we met her at that religious broadcasters convention but she was there and everybody there was acting like they were drunk in the spirit friends that is not the Holy Spirit of God Amen. you are not drunk when you are under the power and influence of God's Holy Spirit Paul said be not drunk with wine but be ye filled with the spirit when Kenneth Hagin used that verse he added to it he said, be you not drunk with wine, but be you filled, be you drunk with the Spirit. He added those words, be you drunk in the Spirit. That's a violation. <clears throat> Penalty. Right? Foul. Technical foul. You cannot add to the Bible to prove your doctrine. The Bible speaks for itself. Amen. And one of the signs that you have the wrong spirit is that it's a drunken spirit and it makes people drunk. Who receive it that is mystery Babylon the great that is the, people are drunk with the wine of her fornication now what these people don't do in public is fornicate but let me just tell you something you don't have to see them do it to know that they're doing it when they act drunk in church you catching my drift 
The Bible's telling you that you can know what it is that you don't see about these people. Because if they accept in themselves a spirit that makes them drunk, it is more than likely because they are also a, have a spirit of fornication in them as well. Does it make sense? Okay? Again, you don't have to catch them in act to know what it is that's going on. All right? Was that the bell? Sometimes my brain blocks it out. Anyway, what, Matt, what, uh, I said it, what uh, gender is God's spirit? Masculine. Anybody says any different, they're lying. They've either been misled and they need to be retrained and corrected, or they just are out to deliberately deceive people. Either way, God's spirit is not feminine. Amen? Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you, dear God, for setting us straight. Lord, this is a big question in people's minds. And it's a question, Lord, because of the amount of false doctrine that's out there. Father, teach it to us straight because we trust and we only trust what your word says. Father, straighten our minds, our hearts out, our lives out. Help us, dear God, to have an answer to those, Lord, who would pervert the scriptures and, and feminize God's nature and God's character and God's spirit. Thank you, dear God, for this lesson. Thank you, dear God, for your Bible. Lord, bless us today, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.